Good afternoon and welcome to a huge weekend of international FEI jumping in Sopot in Poland. It, tonight it is the Longines Grand Prix in the Hippodrome at Sopot, with Sopot has become one of the most established international jumping venues in Europe. And of course the big event following the Longines Grand Prix will be the Longines FEI Jumping Nations Cup on Sunday, the second of the six Division One qualifiers. Well, I'm Phil Gazala, and I'm delighted to be joined by Lucinda Green, and we're gonna take you through the action. We've got 50 competitors, 17 nations represented. Lucinda, how are you? I'm very well, all the better for being with you, Phil, for this really mad Grand Prix from Longines. Well, it's very, very competitive. The Grand Prix here has always been very, very competitive indeed. It's one meter 60. There's, there's going to be a few names that you may not have come across before um, because, you know, we're in Poland and there's some, the Poland have got some very serious riders coming through and have also been placed in the Grand Prix on many occasions, some of the riders, but there's a few other new names as well. So it's going to be a big afternoon for them. And I'm going to give you to pronounce all those names. <laughs> I had a feeling you might. <laughs> I was just looking at our course designer, another poll. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Um, and uh, uh, Simon Tarrant, the course designer who's been building here for a, a few years, he's also assisted by uh, Mr. Weckwert, Skripsik and Sabri Meriton Bata. That's the team building the courses all weekend. And you can hear the seagulls because we're very, very close. I say we, we're not actually in Poland um, at the show, but you can hear the seagulls because Sopot itself is based right on the edge of the Gulf of Gdansk. It's an, actually a, a one of the most prominent Polish um, holiday resorts. And, of course, the weather at the moment, as we can see, is very much holiday weather. Luckily, Lucinda, we're jumping on an arena because the grass... We saw some aerial shots of Sopa earlier, and the grass was very brown. Can you? I could. In a couple of minutes' time, Lucinda, we're going to have a look at the course that Simon Tarrant has built for the Longines Grand Prix. Two-round competition, 50 competitors in the first round, clears through to a second round of jump-off. There are going to be a couple of breaks during the, um, during the course, during the competition in the first round because of, there's going to be, with 50 horses, there's going to be a couple of arena breaks. Which, um, and there it is, 21 degrees and no clouds in the air. And that we're looking there at the 3.8 meter water jump. which is prepared for you and uh, we will see once again the course which is prepared by Shimon Karant, our Last group minute. designers. Last checking one, of the fences the by the grand high, jury. Vertical, then turning to number two which is Oxer 150 high 160 And Lucinda here is the course animation. Do you want to talk us through that? And we will proceed to the triple bar which is 155 high and 190 centimeters spread. After that we have 27 meters to the Oh, carry on, so we go round two, fence three, which is a triple. 
Sloping pole, one meter ninety wide, one fifty five B back pole, then thirty two, sorry, twenty seven meters down to the combination. Upright, one fifty three, one fifty five in the middle, coming out over an oxer after one stride, one fifty two by one sixty. Then it's left handed back to a maximum height, one meter sixty FEI fence. Seven strides on the turn down to an oxer, one fifty three, one sixty five. Then seven or eight strides down to the double, right going into the corner of the arena. Nine. Round that down to the water. So the gallop, the 3.8 meter water, and then the classic jumping design of putting an upright 32 meters after the water. And around now, we have number 12, which is 160 centimeters. Back to fence 11, it's got a Liverpool underneath it. On my plan, 155 by 100, and down to a related distance. 1 meter 60 the upright, 23 meters to a Longin Oxo, 153 by 170. And that is, is the course, and there's the live shot. And 78 seconds the time allowed. Anyway, in the first here, round, so 13 obstacles, 16 jumping efforts, the, the Longin Grand Prix of Poland. For, for the second round. Get us underway, Chris Apps, Meridnik, a well-known Latvian rider who's done so well at this show in the past. Look at Sarah Bruno Camiri, one of the four the Italian will be in the teams. On the Garrett Nebo, Blues Dabber line for Germany. They did so well during the winter at the Longin World Cup Series. Cassandra Orcasel, one of the 11 Polish riders in the competition. Martin Fuchs, world number five there for Switzerland. Georgia Tate, sole representative for Great Britain. Yaroslav Sprzynski, the leading Polish rider in the world there. Emmanuel Gordiano, the leading Italian rider in the world there with Crack Palu. Adam Grzegorski, he won a class earlier on yesterday. Douglas Lindelow, he's been in the top ten of this Grand Prix on three occasions. Emmanuel Camilli, one of the quartet for Italy. Mickey Pender, the young man from Ireland who's been doing so well over the last few years. Rini Dipper for Germany. And Lukas Alexink, there he's in coming in in 42nd place. Steve Gerdat needs no introduction, 43rd. And then the last three in, three for Argentina. Matthias Larocca, followed by Mariana also, and then Matthias Larocca's father, Jose Maria Larocca Jr., will be the last of the 50. That's the lineup. That's the seed set. And look at that. That, Lucinda, we were just talking about the brown ground. There is the reason why it's on the surface. Of course, the last few moments of the riders walking the course will be now look out to the early riders. Ladies and gentlemen, let's start the Longines Grand Prix of Super 2020. So it is the Longines FAI the Jumping, Jumping Nations, Nations Cup weekend. The first round of this amazing Grand Prix. If they will be clear, they are automatically qualified into the second round. Otherwise, three One of the riders will be qualified in the seven second round. Nine-year-olds in the competition out of the 50. Just having a look at the water, familiarising themselves, that's perfectly allowed. Lucinda, a nice looking horse by Cornet, or rather the mayor by Cornet Leblensky. So to get us underway in the launching Grand Prix, Sopot 2023, Kristaps Nerednicks with the nine-year-old stallion Palladium KJV.
middle part of the combination, 1 meter 55. Clears go through to the jump off. Time allowed 78 seconds. So three fences down, 12 faults for Kristaps Meretnik for Latvia. Good start for the nine-year-old Palladium KJV, just a young horse. Clears through to the jump off. One and a half seconds inside the time allowed of 78 seconds. We now go to Czech representative, sole Czech representative in the competition this afternoon, Sarah Vringlakova with Olympia van der Sin Amenshova. Another nine-year-old, nine-year-old mare by Emerald. Strides down to that upright. Beautiful mare, this. I feel it's a lovely, lovely big jump in there. But at only nine, probably. It was 14 penalties included, two for exceeding the time allowed, 12 at the quiz and two for time for Sara Vigralkova and Olympia van de Sinta Mansuife. And we win the bell for the very first Polish Wardy combination. And this is in the cell of Katamandi, bred by Zinedine and Samurai M. For Poland, Wardy Manek. Now we go to the first of ten riders representing Poland. Marek Wakowicz riding the 11-year-old Zinedine Gelding Katmandu. Recently been jumping in Dramen. Finished at the, in the third in a 1 meter 45 class there at the EEF Nations Cup weekend a couple of weeks ago. Trouble with his judgment of that triple bar that the previous man just didn't quite understand the width, but he tied the last one of the trip. 11 years old, probably quality groups. Interesting that hood that he wears, that's considered to be something that helps keep horses calmer and more tranquil and very useful when you're traveling. Oh, sorry, saw that as he came out of the corner. 
the no, don't do water today. Terribly disappointing when you've got a lovely horse like Kathmandu and they take a dislike to the water. That is unbelievable. I really begin to go back to that. Once they've said no, they very often mean it. And he's obviously an interesting temple with this stay calm the hat on his head. I'm talking about the horse, not the jockey. Very useful travelling when you have to pick the horse travelling. Eats the right buttons and calms him down in retirement. It means that Kathmandu and Marek Vatslavik decided to retire today. Well, we've seen them jump far better rounds than that. So that went for Malik Wacklewick with Kathmandu. Interesting, Lucinda, that, you know, second time at the water, jumped it absolutely perfectly. I can't believe it. A brand equestrian in Africa in 2006 and several times part of European Championships in his career. Riding a quadrant next cell is Gerprit Pouk. Now we go to Austria, one of two representatives for Austria, Gerprit Pouk, riding the 10-year-old stallion Equitron Naxil V. As well, very well in Abu Dhabi, the February show there, winning two classes. Followed that up by being sixth in the sixth bar at the Piazza di Siena in Italy. Horse by Balu de Rue, son of the famous uh, Balu Bay de Rue, Olympic medalist. Great colour scheme, not so often you see such a delightful green in the rider's jacket. Of this ten years. The man who somehow to get the engine back under him for that turn. It's like a horse is a little bit unsensitive in the mouth, which can make him easier to ride in some respects and more difficult in others. Uh, perfectly timed round, 78 seconds of time allowed, so hundredth of a second inside the time, but just that one for the time. That was a very nice round from the man who's been riding at the top of the tree for many years, Gerfer Pook for Austria with Equitron Naxel V. Four faults. Let's continue with the riding combination who is representing Thailand, the rider. Now representing Thailand, they represented Thailand at the 2018 World Equestrian Games in America. It's Janak Bourne, Karan Yajia, with Maxwin Kinmar Agalux. on the floor as we know and all three go there. Very disappointing. And yet she really pulled herself up out of that one. She go flat because they're not seeing the double but very often they stay flat in their arc and they really clear the out. Really tried. Right gate. And again, in between not trying very hard, she was really doing a great job. Not trying very hard, but she's trying as hard as she can. Uh, 
and very nicely over the double at the last. The complete on 12 penalties. Yerakmon, Karan Naija Judge, and Maxwin Kinma Agalax. The time is it is definitely achievable. We've had no time faults, but it's quite it is quite tight. You've got to keep keep moving forward, Lucinda. Yes, very much. Now the turn of a man who represented Belgium at the highest level, Olympic Games, London FEI, Nations Cup finals, winning those and being ninth in the Grand Prix here in 2016 and was third in 2021. It's Niels Brunsils with the 10-year-old mayor, Nagana Van Het Pegasov. What a beautiful balance, this rider. Watch how he uses his body as he comes towards the fence. If you, if you get to see him profile again, a lovely example early on. A very, very good balance and very good control of his body. And that doesn't always happen by accident. The other riders have to work really hard to get him straight into their body. Thanks to having the double. Just the horses that are athletes. The riders have to be very honed and toned and fitted for. It looks so easy when you see this, but staying still on a horse is making them pretty big effort to jump on with the 60 fences. It's not easy. The whole of the horse is moving underneath you, and your body is trying to be the fulcrum of stability and balance. Well, now I mentioned the time was tightly centered after the last competitor. That was, in fact, one time penalty along with the two fences down. So, nine faults in all for Niels Brunsils and Nagana Banhet Pegasov for Belgium. Belgium, who are here with a very strong team, including Niels himself, for the Big Longine team competition on Sunday, the Nations Cup. Huge moment for this young man, 22 years old. Course, representing Hungary, Peter Suhai, uh, Peter Suhai. Uh, riding Chaco's Giri Star, 11 year old mayor by Chaco Blue. He's been winning at 1 meter 45, but this combination, Lucinda, very new to this level of 1 meter 60. Yes, I should be very interested to watch her. The breeding in the purple, i.e. Chakubra, very often the progeny of chestnuts. But this one looks a little bit almost more elegant than some of the ones I've seen. They're very powerful uh, horses, very, very good jumper, and sought after all over the world, Chakubra desire. He's got great use of his body, this horse. He's a class to see. The one who opted not to jump up and came back and jumped with perfectly the second one and surprised when you got that fence off the water. And it is a difficult one after the horse stretched out and galloped over the water, then come back and did that fake views. It's quite a question. Perfectly timed, and this young man who's represented Hungary, Lucinda, with the in ponies, young riders, juniors, and now jumping at the top level of seniors at 21 years, 22 years old, and with a very, very nice young horse. So just the one fence for Perasuche. Of of 
And now we go to Germany. You want to play? R riding the 11 year old mare, Hot Easy. One over 200,000 euros together. Sensible sort of mare. Too hot. Very well to get through that trouble. Not everybody's managed to be like that. Not a nice to see. The bridle looks to be a fairly simple snaffle. Not quite sure what's in the mouth, but look a lot of shanks either side. Whoa! <laughs> I jump on what going over the water, and then it's so difficult then to get them back. And they've made that extra effort of gone high and wide over the water. It's so hard to rebalance in those deep strides through that white coat. It's such a shame. Beautiful mare looking really, really well. Just over the time allowed and one fence down, but another super round that was for Jonas Play and Hot Easy for Germany. Five faults in all. So we've had eight of the 50 competitors have come forward so far. We've yet to get our first clear, but there are another 42 competitors to come and some of the biggest names in the sport. We now go to Italy. Italy here to battle for the Nations Cup on Sunday. Bruno Camiri riding the nine-year-old mare by Cadento Samara. Former Olympic rider for Italy, represented three European Championships. We've had one other nine-year-old so far. You can find it a little bit interesting. This course has been done. This is another nine-year-old. The youngest we'll find in the class. Alert your attention, please. Well, worked it out after the first one. Get that a little higher for the next few. So often produces riders that ride in a, a different style, more light in the seat, which you might call classical. In the day of others, back 40 to 50 years, had it to a team. Fashions change, change with clothes, they change with ways to ride. But the Italians, many of them still ride with just lighter seats at the bottom. Well, a very good round from the nine-year-old by Bruno Camiri and Samara. Two down, one second in sort of time. So eight volts for Bruno Camiri for Italy. Start is allowed for the second bullish voider in this competition. It's a current bullish champion voiding home run. It's Przemyslav Konopatsky. The second rider for Poland. It's Premislaw Konopaki with the 11-year-old Spartacus Mayor home run. And they did so well in the indoor series during the winter of the Longines World Cup series. Recently finished second in the three-star Grand Prix in Oklebeck a couple of weeks ago. Has a very high head carriage, this Lucinda. Home yes, run. Just looking at two things. It's another one wearing this Be Calm bonnet, as I call it. Um, 
I don't know how it works, but it's just meant to press on ice and split back up on each point. Oh, wow, she can fly, hey, isn't there? Beautiful. But often horses carry their heads up there because they can see better if they put it right above us into the rider's face and they can't see anything. It's amazing how high some horses need to put their heads in to be able to judge. Well, what's it like riding a horse like that? Well, you just keep them face out of the way because otherwise you get teeth out of that. I, I <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Beautiful. Good girl. Well done. And she's strong and she's keen, but she is listening. And she's still clear. Not too many of those, so that's terrific. Can angle just the double. <laughs> this could be very big for Poland. Twist and turns, comes into the 1 meter 60 upright, is up and over the clock's okay, he's clear, we've got a clear round, it's for Poland. Premislaw Kurnapaki for Poland and home run are the first clear through to the jump off. Well, that's a great, great result for the hosts in Sopot. We will continue with the 3D3, the best rider in the world and the winner of Five Stars Grand Prix of Hamburg, riding the blue saddle in it, Kenneth Ibe. Well, another combination that did so well throughout the Longin FI Jumping World Cup qualifiers. It's Gerrit Nieberg with Blues Davelin. They won the Leipzig leg back in January of the World Cup. They had a tremendous winter campaign. And he's just outside the top 20 in Omaha in Nebraska where they held the big Longine final back in April. Another one, Phil, with quite a large head, but then you always hope there's more room for bigger brains if you have a larger head. But it's more difficult for some of the horses to balance. The head is a very, very heavy part of their body. And if you ever happen Ooh. to be an artist, you know, to pick up a skeleton, the, the, the skeleton of the head is clean, very heavy. So when it gets a bit bigger like this, you get credit to both of you for helping this horse balance as well as it is. In over that option, that the down quite hard. Make that look easy, and therefore much more chance of jumping this because it's much less extravagant to the water jump. Really chance. This is a super round from the world, number 33. One of the top riders in the world, one of the top combinations, and they have just assured that it'll be a jump off because that is clear number two. Gerrit Newberg for Germany, Blues Davelin. Go clear through to the next round. They definitely get their golden ticket for the second round of today's launching round. Very well done. Moving to Ireland, let's continue with Eagle van der Wolf Circus, bred by Elvis Derfoot and Kashmir van Schutte. So this is Jack Ryan. Now we go to Ireland. Represented Ireland at the London FEI Jumping Nations Cup final at the back end of last year. It's Jack Ryan, and this time riding the 10 year old stallion Eagle van der Vulsaka. Zanga side of bread. And that's an extremely frustrating start. Yeah, really hard when that happened. You sort of think, shall I go on and train my horse, or shall I pull up and wait for another day? Trouble. There he kept going. He's so nicely out of his surprise. You can see it clearly in this horse how he needs to have his head quite high to judge. And you see a profile. Don't look close to the tape. The judge is walking over to the water. 
looking for the foot mark in the plasticine. And I think he's... No, he's doing okay because he had the first, as I say, he's got four faults. That was the first fence, wasn't it? Yeah. But what a nice up water, what a lovely partnership, real harmonious. And bangs the last. But that stays there. So two fences down, Jack Ryan and Eagle van der Bulsaka for Ireland. No to teraz także Państwo równie mocno jak wcześniej Przemkowi trzymajcie mocno zaciśnie te kciuki na parkurze kolejnych naszych reprezentantów startujących w konkursie Grand Prix Maksymilian Wechta i dziesięcioletni Now back to Poland already with a clear into the jump off it's the turn of Maximilian Wechta and the 10 year old Casal stallion Cassiopella. Maximilian Weta at the World Championships middle of last year in Denmark with Cepetino up through the juniors and young wider ranks. Beautifully out, beautifully in, not so lucky in the middle. Bounced out the plate a little bit by that particular jump, and some jumps do just hoist you out the saddle, and you just hope the horse keeps straight till you land back in it. Yeah, it was close to the water, and I think that's foot in the water. Flag up. Fairly nonchalant approach, not a lot of extra effort, but it's nice to see that he has no worries about the water. Or bump into that one, which could be a water jump too in a different way because those circles underneath have probably got water in them. I'm not surprised that flag's staying black against the black rails of the second element. So it's a total of 15 penalties, including three for time and 18.94. Complete with 15 penalties, Maximilian Wechter and Cassio Pella for Poland. A great camera shot of the water, kicking out the plasticine. To Italy, Francesco Turturello with Made in Rudisov. Eleven year old, Norton Diole. Mayor. Poznańska publiczność od zawodu Formule czterogwiazdkowej reprezentant był w konkursie Grand Prix był ósmy. Yes, Lucinda. In a table area, two round competition, kicking out the first fences. Yeah, well, what's happened is is, is the horse is pushing his right ear to the side and and. The rider's wondering whether to try and pull the earmuff off. Oh. It's, getting, yeah, it's, it's really upsetting the horse. I don't know why, what's gone wrong. And I think he's going to reckon that that's enough. But th that right ear, the, the one the left yes. last week. Yeah, I don't enough. know the horse well enough. To, I've seen it no, before, no, but I... I so Francesco Tortiorello for Italy. He retires with Made into Ridersoft. But we will have a 13 best to go into the second round of today's Longines Grand Prix. They will take... We now go to... ...of course, into the second round as well. Ukraine. Alisa Danilova. And we will continue... ...with, with the ten-year-old mayor, Cosinel. ...with Cosinel, read by Gascadello in Quebec, will be Alisa Danilova. 
Garcinel, owned by Sergli Dumchenko. Top 10 finish in Bratislava last week. So, Alisa Danilovo, Kosinel for Ukraine. Terrible. This terrible war can go on without injuring the horses. There's been so much support, hasn't there, from all over to get the horses out? Yes, tremendous, wonderful stories coming out. to take out that middle element just he came in pretty strong pulling down on Alina's hands and maybe just lost action her jump and balance so often the horses will say come on let me go I know best and as a rider you'll say no you don't you don't know what's happening you haven't bought the course I have <laughs> communication between the horse and rider is everything you're over there that well, white gate firing up in front of the band. Another one, another horse who is really trying. I'm surprised it didn't go more actually. We've had a stage of it going, but we're over that for a bit now. One foot down, one time penalty, just quarter of a second, over the 78 seconds time allowed for Alisa Danilova for the Ukraine with the 10-year-old Kosinel. Five penalties. Back to Polish equipe. The next rider is representing Poland in the saddle of Dakara. Another one of the 10 representatives in this 50 athlete competition representing Poland. It's Cassandra Urschel with Takara E. Cassandra Urschel who resides in Germany. Back for her, the biggest of their national shows. Big moment last year when she won the Hamburg Derby. For this is a another career top moment. Sorry, Lucinda, carry on. No, it's okay. This is another style of riding. We were talking about the Italian, a very light seat. Now you have the more Germanic, deeper seat, sitting on your bottom all the time until you get to the jump and rise up. But it's just interesting how different horses like different styles. So sometimes you have to adapt your style to suit the type of horse that you've got. Clean for the water, beautifully done. I think that's lovely afterwards, so that should be all right for the white gate. It was. Giving herself a little bit of trouble making that last try rather longer than maybe she needs. And the bike's back off the fence a little bit. 
couple of rattles at the double, the lunging double at the last, but completes with 15 penalties, one second, or quarter of a second again over the time allowed. So 15 penalties for Cassandra Michel with Dakara E for Poland. Let's continue with uh, the last running combination before a little technical break. Evloida, who was a part uh, twice of the uh, World Cup final in his career and last week seventh at the Full Stars Grand Prix of Bosnia. Well, now a more familiar face on the international circuit. Olivier Robert for France with Iglesias DV. You may notice this horse has a big margin there. Some people prefer that because it gives uh, more constant contact at both reins when you're turning. Others don't like it because you can't open one hand and lead them around a turn. So it's peculiar to everybody, but ultimately it's probably safer. If they do try and chew their mouth in there when they're standing around. They can't get their jaw caught in it because there's a, a leather sheet of webbing between the two arms of mouth. A bit technical, that, sorry. I'm doing jolly well meantime. outside hand going across the neck to the right when he wants to turn and that's where they say the big heart yell helps the quality of the turn and the turn is if you make a good turn you have a chance of even having a good jump turn is everything It's a nine altogether, including one for time. Nine penalties for Olivia Robert for France and Iglesias DV. Just over the 78 seconds, time allowed. That's the 17th of the 50 competitors, Lucinda, that we've got coming forward for the Longines Grand Prix of Poland. We've had two clears so far for Poland. We've had Premislaw Konopaki with Hope Run and for Germany, Gerrit Nieberg with Blues Davalion. Those are just the only two clears. The time allowed, 78 seconds, has played a little bit of a part, but no one has actually gone clear outside that time. So the two clears are way ahead. Oh, they're the two that will go through to the jump off, but we've had 17 of the 50 competitors. And there's going to be an arena maintenance break now for 10 minutes. Lucinda will come right back after they have raked the arena.
nations from across the globe go head to head in 10 qualifiers from Abu Dhabi to Dublin, Rotterdam to San Miguel de Allende. is the ultimate test to advance to the final in Barcelona and take home the trophy. Trzy bary, piętro widokowe z najpiękniejszą panoramą na całe Trójmiasto i tropikalny ogród. Do 
Zapisz się więcej na www.oliwiester.pl Jako partner tytularny i oficjalny chronometrażysta zawodów Longin Grand Prix w Sopocie Marka Longin z dumą wspiera najlepszych zawodników skoków przez przeszkody i promuje dążenie do doskonałości w tej jakże prestiżowej dyscyplinie. Więzi łączące Longin ze światem jeździectwa sięgają 1869 roku. Obecnie Marka jest współorganizatorem wielu najważniejszych wydarzeń jeździeckich na całym świecie. Z tej wyjątkowej okazji pragniemy zaprezentować oficjalny zegarek wydarzenia marki Longin. Linię Longin do Czewita XYVY. Ich design przychodzi na myśl uzdy i uprzęże, czyli akcesoria ze świata sportów konnych tak drogiego marce Longin. As the title partner and official timekeeper of the Longin Summit Grand Prix, Longin is proud to support the leading runners of show jumping and continues to promote excellence in this prestigious sport. The long-standing ties between Longin and the equestrian world dates back to 1869. Today, the brand is involved in the most important equestrian event globally. On this special occasion, we highlight the official Longin watch of the event, the Longin Dolce Vita IV line. Their design is evocative of a bridles and harness, referring to the equestrian sport so dear to Longin. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the arena. This is the time when we will continue with the second part of today's Longin Grand Prix, where only the best 13 riders who will be qualified into the second round, but all of them will finish the first round absolutely clear. The 
are very glad that we will open the arena for one of the best riders in the world. It's a fifth the best rider of Longi in the jumping ranking, a former European champion. It's a silver medalist of the World Equestrian Games in Tryon 2018. Twice a part of Olympic Games in Tokyo. Welcome back to Sopod in Poland. It's the Longi Grand Prix. And the next man in the arena is the world number five, the multi-medalist. Been on the podium so many times as the champion, Martin Fuchs for Switzerland with Commissioner Petsy, 10-year-old gelding by Commissario. One of the four quartet of the team gold medalists for the Europeans and the, all four of those Swiss riders in that team are here this weekend to compete for the Nations Cup. Fifth yesterday in the qualifier. Tremendous spring this week. And very interesting head carriage. Jumps almost by putting his head higher. A lot of horses jump by putting their head lower to pick up their shoulders. The vagaries of what makes horses jump is so fascinating. There's very often not a pattern. This horse looks well destined to be one of Marcus's top horses. It's Marcus's top horses. It's got the most wonderful scope, but a very interesting style. Head almost thrown back as it leaves the ground. That was just one time penalty. That will be frustrating as Martin Fuchs looks up to the clock on the edge of the arena. It's 78 seconds, the time allowed. It's just called him out because that was a super round of jumping. So into third place, they may well come back into the second round because it is a limited number as opposed to faults. So one time penalty for Martin Fuchs of Switzerland. We now go to Great Britain, Georgia Tain with the 12-year-old man, Chaco's girl. Georgia puts her hand up when her horse is going to the loo and has to is allowed extra time before the bell makes her go. You know, 45 seconds after the bell goes, and you put the start by then, or they get time for it. Another Chaco Blur horse this time, not Chestnut. And another to manage the in and the out beautifully and just not quite clear the middle element. I was over that vertical after that wide oxer in. Easily across the arm of the sea. Got a lovely calm way of going, this horse. Beautiful balance. Very well ridden by Georgia. A brilliantly judged, uh, well, actually, just outside that time allowed by uh, just under a second, and the one fence down. So five penalties in all for Georgia Tame and Chaco's girl for Great Britain.
So the rules for this launching Grand Prix, 25% of the competitors, so 13 competitors will go through to the jump off irrespective of their score. All clears though, if there are 15 clears, they will all go through whatever happens. 35 in the world, climbing the rankings for Belgium, the leading Belgian rider in the Longin rankings, Wilm Vermeer, with Crescendo MBZ. And a super winner in the World Cup series. Won the Mechelen, Mechelen leg. Lovely, springy, buoyant canter this horse has. Horse by Clinton, another famous bloodline in show jumping. He makes it through that trouble. Only just the final element, though, suddenly found he had to stretch. You had to worry a little bit. He keeps his hind legs very tight. That was a little better, actually. They were a little bit tight underneath him. The more they can flail them out behind, the more chance they've got of clearing the fence with their back legs. Got the balance beautifully back. The fence fell strictly, completely miscited that. And there's something about white that for some horses is very hard to calculate. Not all horses by any means, but a few horses find white difficult and whether it has anything to do with the way the sun is looking at that white fence i don't know but that was a classic i'm sure we'll see it again of a horse being forced by a fence for what reason we're not quite sure Twenty seventy-eight seconds the time allowed Um, Vaughan Vermeer and Crescendo MPZ complete on 31 penalties. That will be a round that the world number 35 will be wanting to forget. We will be watching a riding combination who was... Uh, Last month at the 11th the best position of a Grand Prix of uh, Hamburg five stars. Now for Germany. Stefan Egbers with the 10 year old gelding Baju NRW. Top 10 finish in the Hamburg Grand Prix four weeks ago. This combination. Wiggled his way very successfully through that treble. And probably one of the best we've seen through that double. The first oxen didn't flatten out his jump like it has for so many. Stretched over the water, coming back beautifully for the gate. Read it perfectly, unlike our last competitor. Doing a really lucky there, but doing a lovely job. Ten seconds to get home. Still clear, Stefan Egbert for Germany. Oh, spoke too soon. Clock's going to be tight as well. And he does click over. So that was a lovely round, Lucinda. Just it went wrong in that last line. 
Yeah, what a obstacles. pity. Including penalties plus one for time, it's a total amount of nine and seventy-eight point two two. So a total of nine volts for Stefan Engberg's Baju MRW for Germany. Twenty have gone. We have still have just the two clears. One for Poland is Primislaw Konopaki with home run and for Germany, Gerrit Nieberg with Blues Daveline. Twenty of the fifty gone. We now go back to Poland. Yaroslaw Krasinski riding the 10 year old stallion in Torino and been in the top 10 of this Grand Prix three times in the last six years second in the one meter 45 yesterday leading Polish rider in the Longin FEI world rankings Jaroslaw Skrzynski magic the way this horse throws his hind legs out behind him see if it serves it well it didn't in the treble quite different to one i was referring to earlier that has his hind legs punched up underneath him you see how he picks him right up under his tail and that should keep him clear with his back legs but it doesn't always The trouble is they take that split second longer to get down to the ground if they throw them out like that. And sometimes they feed their takeoff to the next fence. Beautiful line through the water and the gate. Half a second inside the time for the two fences down, eight penalties for the leading Polish rider in the world, Jaroslaw Skrzynski with Interrido. On the way from uh, St. Gallen, just to support his uh, team gold medalist. He represented Switzerland on that gold medal European Championship team a couple of years ago. Representing Switzerland and represented Switzerland at the St. Gallen Nations Cup a couple of weeks ago. Elian Bowman with little lumpy E. A little lumpy, not so lucky at the treble, got over the difficult middle bit and the final. And another one wearing a stay calm hat on his head, and I'm talking about lumpy. Very good in front there, so he's lucky. That is a good thing. Very neat. A bit of encouragement, vocal encouragement there. Problem. Quickest of the four falters at the moment, 77.79. Bearing in mind the top 13 will go through. We've only had two clears so far. This is going to be the quickest four falter, surely. Easily, 73.64. That was a very unfortunate just four faults because that was a super round from Elian Bowman for Switzerland with little lumpy A. Puts them into fourth place 
Martin Fuchs, fellow countryman to well, Ellen Bowman, in third with just that one time penalty. And the competing at the Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro in 2016 in top eight at the five stars Piazza di Siena a few weeks ago. Now the leading Italian rider in the Longeve World Rankings, Emmanuel Gordiano with the 11-year-old stallion, Crack Balu, second in the qualifier on Thursday, 25th in the world rankings. Crack Balu comes in with no bit in his mouth, he's wearing a hackamore bitless bridle. Some horses just prefer not to have a bit in their mouth, others prefer that connection. Beautifully see that treble. Ooh. Oh, took a really odd full stride there, a little bit like what happened at the gate earlier. It's too bad. Beautiful jumping horse. Keeping the pace up because he's got that four faults. He wants to be in the top 13. Oof, he's <laughs> off that. <laughs> Hurtling into these last three. Well, he'll certainly be in the top 13 at the moment. So into fifth place well, goes Manuel Gordiano with that four faults in 76.38. 76 but it's still fifth position currently. To był Emanuel Gaudiano i Krakewalu, wynik przejazdu reprezentanta Wolto 4 punkty karne w dobrym czasie się Moving to Switzerland and we will be watching a 26th ride of today's Longines Grand Prix, the first round. Riding On the Swiss the squad the this weekend for the Nations Cup, it's Yannick Girant with Cipito too, 15-year-old Contagio Gelding. Fourth in Bratislava at the European Equestrian Fund Nations Cup a couple of weeks ago. And that Oxa sees a long stride and it doesn't quite make it. do the same thing again, gets a much better jump. Now the fragile and I'll see it. Uh, 90 through the double, but it's the three fences down, 12 faults for Yannick Girant, riding his own Cipetto 2. So just two clears at the moment for Poland, Premislaw Konopaki, and for Germany, Kerit Nieberg. We go back to Poland, another one of the ten competitors representing the hosts in Sopot. It's Wojciech Wojcianiek with Nakord Maloney. Ninth in the qualifier yesterday. They finished in the top 20 together, these two back in 2019 at the Longin FEI World Cup final. Gothenburg, but yeah, just checking.
this is a very good round. Two fences to go, just the Longine double. Watch the clock, it's gonna be tight. It's gonna be very tight on the clock. He's got over the time allowed. It's a clear jumping, one time penalty for Wojciech Rodioniak and Nakord Maloney. So that puts them into fourth place. Upside Martin Fuchs for Switzerland, also on one time penalty. Wojciech Wojcianiec, jeden punkt karny za przekroczoną normę czasu 62 zetne sekundy. Great round of jumping. And we'll almost certainly, well, may not, but top 13 go through, so I would have thought almost certainly will go through. We stay with Poland. Tomas Miskiewicz with Staccato Laser. Nine year old mayor by Staccato Gold. And together they were 10th in the Grand Prix qualifier yesterday. Tomas Miskiewicz. And stays on eight. Plenty of time on the clock, so two fences down, eight faults for Tomasz Miskiewicz for Poland with Staccato Laser. Puts them in 12th place. 28 of the 50 riders gone. Two clears. Primus Law, Konopaki, Gerrit Nieberg. Two on one time penalty, Martin Fuchs and Wojciech Wojcianiak. And this young man, already a winner this weekend in Sopot. Adam Zagorski with the 10 year old Gelding Isim. Also third in the qualifier that was on the Staccato yesterday. So in great form.
Well, that was disappointing because the first 65% of that round looked, looked very good indeed, but a completion on nine penalties for Adam Kuzgorski and Isem for Poland into 19th place. Let's move to number 30 of the starting order of the first round of Longines Grand Prix today, which belongs to Hungary. Tiroida, who was in top five at the Three Stars Grand Prix of Budapest last month, running E up in Britain. Now the to Hungary. Andras Kovi Jr. with E up. E up owned by Jennifer Nagel. Finished in fifth place at the Grand Prix in Budapest four weeks ago. He yeah. also looked back to see if the pole had stayed there. The judge is happy at the water. go 10 seconds to get home we're looking for clear round number three rattles the blank it's okay and it's still okay but he's again just tipped over that yes, 78 seconds the time allowed time. so time one time penalty for andras kovi junior for hungry with a up so two clears, three on one time penalty. Well, the next man is 30th in the Longin rankings. He's the reigning European champion. It's Andre Tima for Germany with Candid 14. did clear it but he didn't clear the last one really interests me how the horses aren't really quite judging all three elements of that level another one in time is way up behind him on his tail making the landing of those hind legs that's fraction slower so whilst it's great that it clears the jump he hasn't he's got a split second before that powerhouse of back legs is at back on the ground It's 11, 11 penalties altogether for the European champion. Of course, they will be spent defending that title in a three months' time. Andre Tima for Germany, 11 faults with Candid 14. We will continue now with Switzerland. Let's get a look for the 
We've just had the individual European champion in the arena. Now we have Bran Pulsiger and Chelsea Z for Switzerland, one of the team gold medalists from the European Championships two years ago. It's Bran Pulsiger with Chelsea Z. And what a great winter here. They won the Oslo leg of the Longines World Cup qualifiers. Team finished fifth at the Olympic Games. That was riding 22 de Biche. One finally get through that treble without touching any of the rails. Another horse who seems very settled. He's not racing at the fences, giving himself a chance. Let's see how he manages this line. Beautiful and high over the water. Winter will come back into a good balance with him. He just nipped over that gate. Here is the main thing. This is a very good round indeed. It looks plenty of time on the clock. The 78 seconds time allowed. Will this be clear? Number three, it will. Well, the reigning team gold medalists from the Europeans, the multi-medalists Bran Bulsiga and Chelsea Z go clear. They make it clear number three. Currently the second position. Brian Bulsiga, Chelsea Z, first in the race. Concurso Grand Prix w Sopocie, 0 punktów karnych, czas przejazdu 76-25. Of course, all of the key riders are just qualified into the second position. So that pushes the 13th place towards a tame on five penalties. Riding Diaru Bebret by Diarada and Balu Bedrue, it's Andrzej Obwadze. Top 30 go through irrespective of the scores. Carrying forward their faults, of course. Now for Poland. Poland, who have already two riders who are almost certainly going to be in the jump-off. Will Andrzej Oblatek make it number three? For Poland, Andrzej Oblatek, Dirube. So the fluffy noseband, skin noseband, is often used when riders feel that the horse might not put their head up so high because they can't see where they're going if they have a fluffy noseband on. My jury is out a little bit about it, but it's certainly one of the things that is thought to help. A powerful horse, I can see quite why. Needs a bit of help from the fluffy nose man because he's run a little bit through the bridle in that last second, and when you ask him not to, he puts his head right up. Well done. He's a beautiful stride from the turn there. And he's got plenty of time on the clock. Could this be the second clip? Oh, for no. Poland, that was such a shame. Lucinda, that was a fabulous round. He's got the last two fences down. That's a bit what a disappointing. Two last fences, and they went down, and it brought eight penalties in 76.92 for Andrzej Opotek and Diarube. So they are just out of the second round. That uh, leaves Andre Oprotek on 15th place, so just misses out on the top 13 to go through to the second of the two rounds of the Longin Grand Prix of Poland. Huge weekend here in Sopot. It's the Longin FBI Jumping Nations Cup qualifier. But today it's about the individual, the individuals and not the teams. It will be representing Sweden, Douglas Lindelof. 
Now for Sweden. Douglas Lindelow with Charlie's Way, winners of the Grand Prix. Or Douglas is winner of the Grand Prix here back in 2015 on Casello. And fifth a couple of years later with Sacramento. So a great record on the launching Grand Prix at Sopot. Douglas Lindelow, Charlie's Way, Sweden. You can see that little white bit on the side of his mouth means that his bit is made of plastic and not metal. That's usually what it indicates. And some horses like plastic and don't like metal and vice versa. Beautifully through that trip. First horse has made it look easy. Rider horse responding extremely well. Ooh. A little bit of a kerfuffle in front of that water, but he's made it and not so lucky there. He almost started that before he got to the water, didn't quite recover his balance for the gate or for the following fence. And so often, one approach, even though you might be clear to that fence, the approach might not be quite perfect enough and it affects the balance and the equilibrium of the next step. And the one-time penalty added to the two fences down for the former winner of the Grand Prix, Douglas Lindelow, for Sweden, with Charlie's Way, nine penalties. So the top six at the moment, we've got the three clears in Prusnow, Konopaki for Poland, Bram Pulsinger for Switzerland, Gerrit Nieberg for Germany, they're the three clears. Three on one time penalty. Martin Fuchs for Switzerland. Wojciech Wojcianiec for Poland. And Andres Kovi Jr. for Hungary. They're the top six at the moment. Looking down, Elian Bowman on four. Manuel Gordiano, Peter Shuji. Back to Georgie Tame there in 13th spot. Unlikely she's going to be able to keep hold of that spot because it's the top 13 that will go through to the second of the two rounds of the Longin Grand Prix. And these the nine falters. Andre Tima there, the European champion. It didn't go so well for him. Well, it's another arena break. And we will be back for the final 17 of the competitors in the Longines Grand Prix. Lucinda, it's very competitive. We'll have a quick break and we'll be right back. Excellent. Na pewno przemysł konopacki, a czeka na rozwój wydarzeń. Wojciech Wojcianiec, który przypomnijmy na koniu na kort Meloni, minimalnie przekroczona norma czasu i jest na miejscu piątym z jednym punktem karty. Tak na ten moment wygląda sytuacja w konkursie Grand Prix Longin, Grand Prix zawodów CSIO. Pięć gwiazdek, Sopoć.
is the ultimate test to advance to the final in Barcelona and take home the trophy. cele inwestycyjne. W naszej ofercie znajdują się także obiekty zabytkowe. Wspieramy rozwój Polski lokalnej. Sprawujemy nadzór właścicielski nad 31 spółkami o strategicznym znaczeniu dla gospodarki narodowej. Aktywnie wspieramy rozwój polskiego eksportu produktów rolno-spożywczych oraz prowadzimy działania zwiększające konkurencyjność polskiej żywności w kraju i na świecie realna odpowiedź na potrzeby polskich rolników. Olivia Star, czyli cztery restauracje, trzy bary, piętro widokowe z najpiękniejszą panoramą na całe Twoje miasto i tropikalny ogród. Dowiedz się więcej na www.oliviaster.pl
jako partner tytularny i oficjalny chronometrażysta zawodów Longin Grand Prix w Sopocie, Marka Longin. Z dumą wspiera najlepszych zawodników skoków przez przeszkody i promuje dążenie do doskonałości w tej jakże prestiżowej dyscyplinie. Więzi łączące Longin ze światem jeździectwa sięgają 1869 roku. Obecnie Marka jest współorganizatorem wielu najważniejszych wydarzeń jeździeckich na całym świecie. Z tej wyjątkowej okazji pragniemy zaprezentować oficjalny zegarek wydarzenia marki Longin. Linię Longin do Czewita XYVY. Ich design przywodzi na myśl uzdy i uprzeże, czyli akcesoria ze świata sportów konnych tak drogiego marce Longin. As the title partner and official timekeeper of the Longines Support Grand Prix, Longines is proud to support the leading riders of show jumping and continues to promote excellence in this prestigious sport. The long-standing ties between Longines and Equestrian World date back to 1869. Today the brand is involved in the most important equestrian events globally. On this special occasion, we highlight the official Longines watch of the event, the Longines Dolce Vita IV line. Their design is evocative of uh, riddles and harnesses, referring to the equestrian sports so dear to Longines. Ladies and gentlemen, in front of us is the last part of uh, today's uh, Longines Grand Prix. So far, we could see only three riders who did it clear in the first round and who are just qualified in the round two. Then uh, we have uh, another three more who finished uh, the first round with the one time fault. So far, we have qualified into the second round also our four and five falters, but let's see, because only 13 best of all... Welcome back to a glorious afternoon so in Sopot in Poland, in right on the edge of, of the Gulf of, of Gdansk. So but the action is not on the water, it's the in the arena. We have 13 competitors left to jump in the first of the two rounds of the Longin Grand Prix of Poland. The top 13 from the 50 starters will go through to the jump off and irrespective of their scores, we've got three clears so far. For Poland, we've got Primislaw Konopaki. For Switzerland, Bran Bulsiger and for Germany, Gerrit Nieberg. Martin Fuchs, Wojciech Wojcianiec and Andres Kovi Jr. are three on one time penalty. Those are the six we're almost certainly going to see in the jump off. Once we've got the next 13 through, we will know who the remainders will be. I'm Phil Gazala and I'm delighted to be joined by Lucinda Green and we are very much enjoying the action at this top five star show in Poland. Lucinda, um, basically we're going to have a very competitive jump of whatever happens from now on, but we've got some big names to come. Yeah, it's been really, really interesting watching and the, the treble seems to have caused... We will open the last words of today's Longines Grand Prix, the first round of today's Longines Grand Prix, so we will be able then to continue with the last number two and we will know the name of the new winner of CSIO Five Star Sub-23. So, for Austria, Katarina Rumberg with... We the 11 year old Komofo Gelding for Kuma the 5. Nation, the representing Austria. We will be watching a Kuma, read by Komofo and Arsvivendi, read by Kantarina Romberg. Teraz przed Państwem jako pierwsza po przerwie technicznej 35 na liście startowej para z Austrii. Two representatives for Austria, Gerfried Puck. He's actually on four faults, Gerfried Puck. In tenth place so i suppose he's got a squeak of being in the top 13 to going through to the next round let's see what happens katarina rumberg for austria interesting breeding this horse Comil Fo and his damn sire is ars vivendi which is an irish sire european bred making quite a name for himself in eventing very bold brave horses and made it through that travel i discussed a big horse and not a very big girl. She's doing well.
gallops onto that one and still gets out over the vertical without taking it down. Very scrapey horse just stepped across the water, easily cleared it. Oh. Really sprung into the air there. This is a super round and she's got plenty of time on the clock. Uh, that was looking as if it was going to go wrong there, but she well rescued. Brilliantly through that double. She's clear. That is a clear for Austria as Katarina Rundberg stops the clock in 75.98. 78 seconds the time allowed. The grin says it all. They're in to the jump off. Katarina Romberg and Kuma, who were clear all the way in the second best time, 75.98, so they are qualified into the second round. Kuma, who's been a great partnership with Katarina Romberg for the last few years both indoors and outdoors. We go to Italy. It's Emmanuel Camilli with the nine-year-old gelding Odense Odevelde. Represented Italy at the World Championships in Denmark last year. That was riding Chadolano JRA. Another young one, nine years old, by Diamond de Semi, a horse that's thrown some really top level show jumpers and three day eventers. Many of them before at Tokyo Olympics. Let's see if this one can follow. He has not managed it today. Down went the middle element of the double, double even. Another one with a very interesting style of jumping. This is neck. Ooh, just managed to survive the trip there. Keeps his neck very in a U shaped over the top of the fences. What will he do at the water? Similarly, and jump straight in. Interesting stuff in his mouth. I can't tell if that's a hackamore bit, the spiral, and the bit, or what. But whatever, I don't think he's a very easy fellow to ride. And some really good fences here. One time penalty to the two fences down, or a fence down the foot of the water. For Emmanuel Camilli, for Italy, nine penalties. In 13th place at the moment, Jonas Spray for Germany on five penalties. Quickest four falters, 73.64. Relevant to the top 13 placings. Now another nine-year-old with a great younger rider, Mickey Pender for Ireland with HHS Los Angeles. Michael Pender, 24 years old, but has had years of experience through ponies, young riders and juniors. Been on the senior teams as well for Ireland. The recent or the last Nations Cup final in Barcelona. A horse bred in Ireland by the great Marion Hughes. Made quite a business of breeding as well as jumping at top level. But disappointingly, that middle element of that trouble has gone again. Cavalier Royale is the damn sire who's a very well known sire. Holsteiner, I believe, resides in Ireland and produces a lot of event horses as well, like Dermot de Stenny. And that goes as well, so not having <clears throat> quite so much luck tonight. Both the Irish horses we've seen have just jumped a little bit as if they're not as fresh as daisies. Then maybe they've had a long trip. Poland is a long road trip from Ireland, particularly, but they've probably been in Europe 
competing earlier. And similar and score to the last rider. Nine penalties, two down, one time penalty for Michael Pender, HHS Los Angeles for Ireland. Ten more competitors to go. Three clears, three on one time penalty. And 13th place is five penalties at the moment. Jonas Play in Germany, top 13 through to the second round. The best rider of Lodgy Jumping Ranking representing Belgium is Kun Verreg. Now for Belgium, Kun Varika with Lecter van der Bishop. Sixth in the ground, and they qualify yesterday in the top 50 in the world. Big stretch over the three point that We look close to the tape, but the judge hasn't moved, so she's happy. Belgian bred horse. This is a very, very good round indeed. This is almost certainly going to be clear number four because he's been jumping so well is 75.28 actually the quickest round that we've had so far as Kun Varika makes it clear number five clear all the way for Kun Varika with Lecter van der Bishop clear round in so Belgium go in to the second round with Kun Varika and Lecter van der Bishop and that's just knocked out Jonas Spray for Germany from the top 13. So now for the Ukraine, Alisa Danilova is in 13th place. For Argentina, it's Matias Albarasin and full option Van Tezander. Represented Argentina twice at the Olympic Games. Argentina who field a team in the London FBI Nations Cup jumping on Sunday. Full option owned by Jose Maria La Roca, one of his fellow team members. In a rider with a, a very light seat, a very powerful horse. He did an interesting escape from the treble and was pleased enough with himself to be able to back as he landed. Yeah, he sort of kept on coming down to that white gate, didn't he? So he never really managed to get his engine under him to pop up into the air after elongating, as they have to, over the water. Lovely bit of riding there. 73.64. Well, he's now 
going to have to watch. He's going to make that. He's not going to make the top seat. Not with those time penalties. So six penalties in all for Matthias Albaricin. 79.41 top the clock with full option Van der Zand. Into 19, 16th, apologies, 16th place. We go to number 40 of the starting order in today's uh, Longin Grand Prix and that belongs to Italy, Rodin Cash de Prato. Red Boy, Lac de Triomphe and Phil Farder wrote it. Uh, now Simon to Rosato. Italy. Massimo Grossato with Cash di Pratel. Very different sort of horse to what we've been watching in those big, powerful, warm blood. Now you have a little lightweight, springy, not quite a race horse, but more on those lines. Even again, slightly lighter seat. Fancy little horse, but quite a difficult horse to ride, quite hot in the head as well as in the body. And you see the red uh, ribbon on his tail. Give an unwelcome kick to one of his compatriots in the collective ring. Very clever little stride in front of that boxer. <clears throat> Sprung into the air. Got a real ability, this horse. So just and is off. naturally very quick, Lucinda. So that might keep him in the top 13 on the four faults as he clears the last. The Longin Oxer stops the clock in 74.22 into 10th place goes Massimo Grossato for Italy with Cash Dupatel. So, in line to be in the top 13, seven left to jump, five clears, three on one time penalty, and then five on four faults at the moment, poised to go in to the second round. Germany, René Dietmer, with the 10-year-old mare, Corsica X. Well done, slithered through that treble, but slithering through and clear is what it's all about. Very classical jump, this horse. Doesn't put any more in than he has to, but really tries to go high enough and what not. Not so lucky there. That's dropping out a little bit of his scope now. Maybe he's getting a little he's tired. Quite a, quite a quick round, though. I think he might just make that top 13. He's gone into 11th place, 74.52. The one fence down, Lady Dietmer for Germany. Into 11th with course correct. It's currently 11th position for them. Now representing the Republic of North Macedonia, Luka Zaloznik with Columbus G, owned by Joran it's representative of Macedonia, Luka Zaloznik. One of the Olympic ideals is multinationality. 
to try and encourage as many nations as possible to compete in each sport. And show dumping seems to be doing really well at encouraging people from different countries or who have enough, who have a passport of that country, whether they live there or not. Macedonia. Taking real care into that treble, and that was almost his undoing. I have this tip over the middle element. Another lovely horse, not to jump. Some of the sheepskin on his breastplate, bring down between his front legs, give him just that bit more comfort. And off he gallops to the water, almost on the loose rein. And then balances really well for the white gate, makes a really good job of that. A rattle, but it stays there. This is going to be tight on the clock for the 13th place and he does indeed stop the clock on 76.66 into 13th 76. place goes Luka Zaloznik for Macedonia so with Columbus G. Let's continue with another best riders of the world, uh, riding in the saddle of Isminka, it's a gold Olympic medalist uh, from Olympic Games. Now Ireland. the turn of Steve Gerdat. Steve Gerdat riding obviously for Switzerland. I say obviously because he has been on the podium so many times for his nation. Steve Gerdat, former Olympic champion for Switzerland, riding is Minka. A 10-year-old mare by my lord Carter Joe, so more breathing in the blue of show jumping. Well into the treble, well over the middle, and beautifully out. Never looked in doubt. But then, this minka is being ridden by one of the very best riders in the world. We're lucky to be watching. Look at that, see there. If we put down the last few sides of the water, and can you bring them back in there? It's not quite enough to get that white gate here. Yeah. It's a man, sorry. Mares very often need that little bit more sensitive riding to see this well up to the as he takes out the penultimate. So the Olympic champion is out. It's Steve Goddard and Isminka complete on eight penalties. So Luka Zaloznik maintains that 13th place, that final ticket to go into the second round with three more to jump. We have still some riders to come and start in the first round of Longines Grand Prix today. And the next one is representing Ireland, the riding express trend run by future trend and Condias. It's Jessica Burke. Now representing Ireland, Jessica Burke riding the 13 year old future trend gelding express trend. Ireland, who are not actually here fielding the team.
And well up over the last element of that difficult treble. I just correct myself there. It's, uh, I said Ireland weren't fielding a team for the Nations Cup, but of course they are fielding a team. And it's one of Jessica's great ambitions is to be not just on the squad, but in the team itself. Really well through that double, really up in the air, not going out too long like some of them have. It's bring into the water, sadly. Didn't make any effort to clear it at all. Made a big effort over that one. Express train. Uh, it's a time penalty to the three fences down, or two foot two down and one foot in the water. Thirteen penalties in all for Jessica Burke, expressed three left, sorry, six left to jump. We've got in 13th place Luka Zaloznik on four penalties in a time of 76.66. Top 13 go through, 50 competitors representing 17 nations started the Longin Grand Prix here in Sopot in Poland. Now for Turkey, Alessia Arrigo Zavadis riding the 10-year-old gelding Dawson. Represented Turkey through ponies, juniors, young riders and now just 23 years old riding in a senior five-star Longin Grand Prix. Another with Blue Show Jumping Blood, Diamond de Semi again. This is the third one we've had. You notice that square on his coat by her heels is where he's been left unclipped so that the spur or the heel can't rub him a little to be raw. There's a very strict rule about any blood on a horse, either in the mouth or on the sides is instant elimination. So one of the things to help because some horses have very sensitive skin is to leave that little bit of extra hair on where your leg will be contacting that. Looks like he's got straight in too. What does the judge think? All is good. Springing beautifully into the air over that oxer. First one that's jumped straight down the left hand side. Most of them have been in the middle and then gone hard left over that first one. Well, nicely down that last line, but 14 penalties in all for Alessio Arrigo Zazadez with Dawson for Turkey. We already know that the Polish joining uh, equip will have their rider in the second round, but why to not get some more? The next to go is representing Poland, the riding fair. It will be Mikola Poland Badanski. are guaranteed two competitors in the jump off. Premislav Konopaki on zero penalties and Wojciech Wojcianiak with just the one time penalty. Can they add to the two in the jump off? For Poland, Mikolaj Baranski with Freja, fourth in the qualifier on Thursday, yesterday. This horse has quite an interesting contraption. There's a long shank out of the side of his mouth, which is, I would think, operating on a noseband, giving pressure on a noseband. Some horses prefer that pressure in the mouth and as well as that he's got a nose net on because nobody knows why but some horses just shake their heads and if you can put a nose net on they don't have the same rather hysterical nose shape nobody knows if it's a little insect in the air if it's a nerve thing but some horses just do it 
and there's very little you can do about it. It's fascinating to think who first discovered that, Lucinda. Isn't it? There's mm. so many things in horses that we don't know. And sadly, it's back to all three elements of the treble. Certainly would be the bogey fence of the competition, taking out most of the hopefuls. And I think a lot of this horse's difficulty comes from, it stems from his mouth. The horse is happy in the mouth. They're happy to do their job. And sometimes it takes an awful lot to find a fit straight into the water but a horse is happy and I swear there's a bit out there for every horse but finding it is difficult. Yeah and that's that's what that's what we're seeing. A, a difficult a difficult fellow in his mind. Well a huge step up in his career for the young 20-year-old Mikola Baranski to compete in a five-star Longin we Grand Prix the and they retire. Representing Hungary as the next to go. With the Mesdurhedes Chabala, read by Chaco Blue and Palu Dure, will be on the start in the rider who was a part of World Equestrian Games in Tryon in 2018 and back then to World Equestrian Games in Cannes. In Hungary, who are represented at the moment well, in the jump off by Andres Junico. Andres Kovic Jr. And now it is the turn of Gabor Sabo Jr. For Hungary, arriving Mesa Hedges Chabala. Part of the squad that went to the 2018 World Equestrian Games. Another Chaco Bleu and Balu de Rue on his other side, so great breeding, but as people say, your horse doesn't know who his parents are. It's how good he is, how much he wants to do the game, how much he wants to leave the fences up. And believe me, if a horse doesn't want to, he doesn't do it. Beautifully lamping at the minute. And some clear over the water, didn't balance to the gate. You were only just a little and it just wasn't enough. 76.66 seconds on four faults. That's the 13th place at the moment, Luka Zaloznik. And he's not going to make that 76.66. So we won't be in the top 13. As he comes down to the lunging Oxer. Gets a time penalty, a couple of time penalties. Vent last fence down. 12 faults in all for Gabazaba Jr. and Meza Hedges Chabala. Now we have three remaining three more to, go to go, in the first all of the three representing Argentina. The next to go is with Calisto de Bife, bred by Griseldi and uh, Vincent and Matias The first Alaroca. of that trio for Argentina, Matias Larocca riding Calisto de Bife. Matias Larocca, son of Jose Maria Larocca, who will be the last to jump in this Grand Prix. Good to see Argentina so well represented, well north and east of their country in Poland. And Matthias Alperson, who won't be in the second round, but he's only in 19th place. So that was a good, and of course they've got a team in the Longines Nations Cup on Sunday.
15 years old. His horse knows what he's doing. Maybe he isn't in his first flush of youth. He may be not quite as agile as he might have been, just dropping his legs on the odd pole. Oh, he just ran astride with his back legs there. Didn't quite come into that as he hoped it would. And that completes on 16 penalties for Matthias La Roca with Calisto del BF for Argentina. Calisto, like all the quartet from Argentina, owned by Jose Maria La Roca, who we'll be seeing in a few moments' time. Two to go in the Longines Grand Prix. That's the first of the two rounds. 50 competitors representing 16 nations got us underway an hour and a half ago. Now the turn of Mariana Orsa with Elton Van Het Exelhoff. 11-year-old Zanga's Idlebred Gelding. Made it through that trouble. Well done. Lovely jump over the water, seems to have the balance for the gate, yes. Beautifully got back together for that ox. Uh, now we've got this huge ox with the, the pools under it, with the last rather flimsy set of planks. Watch the clock, but he's still clear. And he's clear jumping, he's got two time penalties. He goes into ninth place. Mariana Ossa represents Argentina in the second of the two rounds of the Longines Grand Prix. Two penalties, clear jumping for Mariana Ossa and Elton Van Het Esselhoff. Luka Zalosnik from Macedonia pushed out of 13th place. Now the last of the 50 competitors, also representing Argentina. And the man who has flown the flag for Argentina show jumping at three Olympic Games and many other championships is Jose Maria La Roca Jr. with Essi Toulouse. He looks like he's expected to have a fence down. He's going to try and get into the jump off on speed because he's fairly roaring round those first two. But the treble tells us everything. So far and well ridden and very well jumped. see why he's represented Argentina in three Olympics. Oh, not so lucky here, though. And that's, we had one at the very beginning, didn't we, Phil, that came on that corner and said, no, I'm not going to that water. So he's done much the same. He's given him a little telling off and said, come on, and back out. Let's, let's see if he can't. And I would expect him to stop again. Yeah. 
and that's what the, the first horse that didn't like the water just went the second time. Both of us were astonished. So, unfortunately, as well, elimination is eliminated to do a second. So, elimination for the final athlete Jose Maria La Roca and ESI Toulouse for Argentina. So that completes the first of the two rounds of the Longines Grand Prix of Poland, SOPOT. 13 will go through to the second round. There will be some arena maintenance, but let's just quickly run down the names. Kuhn Verika for Belgium, Primus Law Konopaki for Poland, Katarina Rundberg for Austria, Brian Bulsinger, Garrett Nieberg, Martin Fuchs, Wojciech Wojcianiak for Poland also, Andres Kobe Jr., Mariana Ossi, Elian Bowman, Massimo Grossetti, René Dietmer and Enwell, Emmanuel Gordiano. They are the top 13 that will go into the second round. They carry forward their penalties. It's just Kuna Varika, Prismos Kolopaki, Katrin Rumberg, Brian Bulsinger and Gerrit Nieberg who are on clear rounds. The rest carry penalties. It's all to play for. There will be a break for I think another 10 minutes or so and we'll be right back for the culmination of the 2023 Lunch Grand Prix of Poland. prestigious competition. The launching FEI Jumping Nations Cup Series is the biggest prize in team jumping. This could be very, very popular in England. Do you want to go?
Gospodarujemy zasobem własności rolnej Skarbu Państwa. Oferujemy nieruchomości zasobu na cele inwestycyjne. W naszej ofercie znajdują się także obiekty zabytkowe. Wspieramy rozwój Polski lokalnej. Wspieramy rozwój właścicielski na 301 spółkami o strategicznym znaczeniu dla gospodarki narodowej. Aktywnie wspieramy rozwój polskiego eksportu produktów rolno-spożywczych oraz prowadzimy działania zwiększające konkurencyjność polskiej żywności w kraju i na świecie. To realna odpowiedź na potrzeby polskich rolników. Oliwie Stem, czyli cztery restauracje, trzy bary, pięć produktów z najmniejszą dobrem na cele dwie miasta i produkty
As a title partner and official timekeeper of the Longjin Sopo Grand Prix, Longjin is proud to support the leading riders of show jumping and continues to promote excellence in this prestigious sport. The long-standing ties between Longjin and the equestrian world date back to 1869. Today, the brand is involved in the most important equestrian event globally. On this special occasion, we highlight the official Longjin watch of the event, the Longjin Dolce Vita IV line. Their design is evocating of uh, bridles and harnesses, referring to the equestrian sport so dear to Longjin. Jako partner tytularny i oficjalny chronometrażysta zawodów Longin Grand Prix w Sopocie Marka Longin z dumą wspiera najlepszych zawodników skoku przez przeszkody i promuje dążenie do doskonałości w tej jakże prestiżowej dyscyplinie. Więzi łączące Longin ze światem jeździectwa sięgają 1869 roku. Obecnie Marka jest współorganizatorem wielu najważniejszych wydarzeń jeździeckich na całym świecie. Z tej wyjątkowej okazji pragniemy zaprezentować oficjalny zegarek wydarzenia Marki Longin. Linię Longin Dolce Vita XYY. Ich design przywodzi na myśl uzdy i uczęże czyli akcesoria ze świata sportów konnych, tak drogiego marce Longi. Proszę Państwa, ja teraz już Państwa proszę, popatrzcie na telewizję. Już za chwilę animacja drugiego nawrotu Longi Grand Prix Sopot. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get a look at the big screen because this is the course of the second round of Longines Grand Prix today. Welcome Here's back to the final moment of the Longines Grand Prix of, of Poland. They start at what was fenced 10 in the jump-off course designer Simon Tarrant. Right-handed down to what was the first fence, then down to the second fence. So this line that we're very familiar with, the Oxa 150 by 160. They then go round to fence three, the same position, but not the triple bar, now an upright at one meter 60. Then there's 27 meters, that actually is more than that now because they miss out the first part of the treble. So it's actually um, 38 meters now down to what was 4B and then 4C. Left-handed across the arena to an OXO 155, 153 by 165. And then across the arena to the second part of the double, the longing upright, that's the penultimate fence, and then a long gallop down to a maximum height at fence 12, the OXA which is now fence 16. That is the jump off course. We're expecting 13 competitors forward for the jump off. The sun is going down, but the sparkle is still very much on the Longines Grand Prix. Great job that Simon Tarrant has done. He, the Polish course designer, he's been here many times before actually designing the courses. Temperature has dropped from the 20, was it 23, 21, 22, 23 earlier on where we started the competition. And it looks like it's going to be first in Emmanuel Gordiano for Italy with crack a balu followed by Rene Dietz for Germany, Massimo Grassati, Elian Bowman, Mario Melsa, Andres Kobe Jr. Wojciech Wojciech for Poland, great if he was to win, Martin Fuchs for Switzerland, Gerrit Nieberg, Brand Bulsinger, Katrina Rundberg, Presmi Konopaki and last in will be Kuhn Varika. Ladies and gentlemen, everything is prepared to start of the second round of today's Longines Grand Prix, all created by Shimon Tarant and his team. We just explained to you how the second round will look like, uh, all of the measurements, uh, time allowed, which is 57 seconds, and of course, riders are coming into the second round in reverse order of merit.
so the very first to go. Out of 13 riders who were qualified into the second round, the very first one will represent Italy. It's the rider who was a part of... Uh, to get us underway for the culmination of the 2023... In Manuel Gordiano, the 2023 Longin Grand Prix of Poland for Italy, former Olympian Emmanuel Gordiano with Crack Baloo. Oh, I think that was a very unfortunate Started on four faults, so that first fence down puts him on eight. I think he hit the wing there. That was a trying to take the shortest route. Howard's 7B. And then down to the last. He completes on 8 fault 55.47. 57, I should say. The second to go will be also the rider who finished the first round with four penalties on its account, uh, taking them into the round number Now two. for Germany. Start is allowed for Germany now. Riding for Rene Dietmar. It's Rene Dietmar. Bringing forward four penalties, riding Corsica X. Cuts inside. Very tight turn. Well, clear jumping, carries forward the four faults. So 54.16 does put René Dietmer for Germany into first place with Corsica X. Also, this rider finished the first round with four penalties only. Riding for Italy with Cash de Prattel, it's a Massimo Grossetto. Now for Italy. Got Manuel Gordiano in second place at the moment on eight faults. Now the turn of Massimo Grossetto with Cash de Prattel carrying forward the four faults. Well, we've seen that happen already. Now down to a vertical, replace the triple bar. It's 
last two parts of what was the combination and the back pole is gone. So on 12, out of contention, Massimo Grossato. Well, he competes on 15 penalties, 59.97. Massimo Grossato for Italy with it's Cash du Pratel. And another one who finished the first round with just one down with four penalties. Uh, now for Switzerland. Switzerland. Team, it's Elian Bowman. team gold medalist from the European Championships two years ago, Elian Bowman. For Switzerland, riding Little Lumpier on four. quicker on the clock and that's a very quick turn away from what is now a double can he go into the lead it's 49.33 he does Elian Bowman European team gold medalist for Switzerland with Little Lumpy goes in to the lead. On four faults, he's carried forward from the first of the two rounds of the Longin Grand Prix. Let's continue with Roy Combination from Argentina, who finished the first round with a two time fault. So now on. They will start in the second round. An advantage of just two time penalties. It's Mariano Ossi for Argentina with Elton Van Het Esseloff. Reminding Elian Bowman, who carried forward the four faults, is the current leader. not it's not the quickest round but if he maintains that two faults he will go in to the lead And he completes on three time penalties because he picked up another one in this round, but it's still enough to go in to the lead. Mariana Osso for Argentina and Elton Van Het Eckelshoff goes in to the lead in the Longin Grand Prix. Apologies that we have lost the services of Lucinda Green, who was joining me with commentary from another country. Unfortunately, connections seem to have avoided us continuing. Now, for Hungary, Andreas Kobe Jr. with E up and brought forward one time penalty. Three on one time penalty, then the five clears. Uh, 
a rub. But okay. It looks like a clear would give us a new leader. Oh. Well, that's put them on five penalties now, so that will drop them into fourth place if they can stay on five. But they've clicked over the time allowed of 57 seconds. So it's six penalties. They go into fourth place. Andrea Kobe for Hungary and A up into fourth place with six penalties. Two more with one time penalty and then the five clears. Let's continue with the first Polish rider in the second round of today's Salonji. So two Polish riders through to the jump off in the Longin Grand Prix of Poland. This man, Wojciech Wojciech, on one time penalty and Premier Law Konopaki will see later with a clear. Wojciech Wojciech, Nakord Maloney. Oh, well, that's dropped them down into fourth place. So the hopes for Poland rest on the shoulders of Prismo Kalopaki. Seven seconds of time allowed. He's going to stay inside that time, but he will slip. Oh, but he's now gone into nine, so that's it's curtains it's for Wojciech Wood, Daniak, and Nakord Maloney into sixth place. So, current leader for Argentina, Mariana Ossi, on the three penalties. Now the world number five, former European champion, former lots of champions, it's Martin Fuchs for Switzerland with Commissar Petsy carrying forward the one-time penalty. Oh, well, we certainly weren't expecting that, Commissaire Petsy, just a 10-year-old gelding. And what other ideas of entertainment? Well, that's an interesting disagreement for Martin Fuchs for Switzerland. Clock's coming, of course, but he's on a 10-year-old who will want to be getting some education. So, an education round for Martin Fuchs and the 10-year-old Commissar Petsy. A 
and then we're down to the five clears from the first round. And a nice round jumped by the world number five, Martin Fuchs. And been eliminated for jumping a further fence there, but I think everyone understood what was happening in that round. So, current leader, Mariana Osse for Argentina. He's on three penalties. Five to jump, all clear. Now, the world number 33, it's Gerrit Nieberg for Germany with his World Cup qualifier winning Blues Daveline. Blues Daveline, owned by Ozef Kuntz. Right, this is where the action really will be because surely one of the five clears from the first round will win the Longines Grand Prix of Poland. Quickest round we've had is 49.33. That was a quick round from Elian Bowman, who completed on four penalties. But, so that's the kind of time that we can expect to see. And that is the time that we are going to see, that's for sure. It's quick. It's 50.03. It's the new leader. He's clear both rounds. Double clear from Garrett Nieberg for Blues, Blues Develine for Germany into the lead for the jump. Let's see how good the time of the second round the ring is. It's 50.03. Gerrit Nieberg, Blues Develine, zero punktu karny, także w nawrocie drugi. Zero punktu karny, wynik końcowy, czas bazy, czas w nawrocie drugiego, 53 sekund. sekund. Another member of that Swiss European team gold medal winning European team. It's Brian Bolsinger for Switzerland with Chelsea Z. Fifty point zero three, set by Garrett Nieberg of Germany. The sun starts to go down over the arena at Sopot, casting shadows. Gone round that Longin fence at the top. Oh, I was just going to say nicely through that double, but a very light click has taken that back pole up that puts them on four Garrett Nieberg retains the lead with three still to jump and 52.1 but that pole down for Bram Bolsinger puts them into fourth place currently the second with Chelsea said, and now just looking at the scores, Mariano Ossa on the three penalties goes into second place behind Garrett Nieber. Three left. And one of those representing Poland, Perisma Konopaki, he will be in next. But first, it's to Austria. It's Katarina Rumberg with Kuma 5. And what a great partnership these two are. Kuma 
Nie, nie ma takie zero punktu karnych. Nie on jest na prowadzę. Teraz Katarina Robak. 50.03. The time, Garrett Nieberg starts off with the Oxer and a familiar track for the next four fences. Big, long, striding horse Kuma eating up the ground in this arena. Ever through there. That was a brave shout. Well, I was going to say that was a brave shout. She didn't pay off, but she had to go for it. But it is four faults on the board. The time is 52.37. But into fifth place goes Katarina Romberg for Austria with Kuma 5. Gerrit Nieberg retains the lead for Germany. The only clear at the moment on 50.03. We still have only one double clear water. It's Kerry Nieberg with Blues Double in double clear in 50.03. But the next two games well, representing Well, this Poland could be a very, very Brazil popular Asia round indeed. Przemysław Konopacki. Dobrze, guys. Przemysław Konopacki, home run. Przemysław Konopacki with home run for Poland. 50.03. The time to beat set by Garrett Nieberg of Germany. Didn't waste an ounce, didn't come inside, but brushed the flowers down to the double. Down on the clock, just over one and a half seconds. Oh, and the fence is gone. Well, that was felt by the crowds. And flies the last 53.05 into sixth place. Goes Plamislaw Konopaki. It wasn't to be the dream for the Polish, but a great round from two of the Polish riders in the top 13 in the launching Grand Prix. We're down to the final rider. So, as we have seen in the Longin FEI Nations Cups in the last four runnings here at Sopot, Germany and Belgium have battled out the Nations Cups. Yet again, we have a battle between Belgium and Germany. Last to go, Kuhn Varika for Belgium with Lecter van de Bishop. 50.03 to beat. Gerrit Nieberg, current leader for Germany. He's got inside. Can he make it? He has. Perfect. He's up on the clock. And look at that turn after the double. This is looking a very good round indeed for Belgium. It's surely going to break the 50-second barrier. He stops the clock in 49.04. Kunavarika for Belgium with Lecter van de Bishop win the 2023 Longines Grand Prix of Poland.
Well, that sets the scene for the weekend, surely, with Germany and Belgium bidding to get a hat-trick in the Longines FBI Jumping Nations Cup on Sunday. And Kuhn Marika surely will be on the team on Sunday, but a delighted, delighted Belgium taking the Longines Grand Prix. Let's reflect on the 13 in the jump-off. We had five that had to clear from the first round. Only two of the 13 actually completed on, on complete clear, double clears. Kunavarika take the number one spot, followed by Gerrit Niebo with Blues Daveline for Germany. Mariana Osse, great rise to fame him with three penalties. In fourth place, Eliane Bowman, then Bram Bolsinger, two Swiss riders. In sixth, Katarina Rumberg. In seventh place, four Poland. Sixth place for Poland. Uh, Pritor Kolopaki. Looking further down the list, Martin Fuchs, we saw that trick around in 13th place. Well, what a tremendous major start to the huge weekend of jumping in Sopot, one of the principal five-star venues on the European FEI circuit. So that completes the 2023 Longin Grand Prix of Poland. The victory goes to Kuhn Varika with Lecter Vidi Bishop for Belgium. Gerrit Nieberg in second place with his wonderful Blues Daveline. Then in on three penalties, Mariana Ossi for Argentina in third place with Elton Van Het Ethelhoff. And in fourth place, Elian Bowman and Little Lumpy E. That is the top four. That's the top placing. It's congratulations to Kuhn Varika for Belgium. Now the question is, the question is what will happen on Sunday? Because on Sunday at local time, midday on Sunday in Sopot, is the second of the six legs of the Longin FEI Jumping Nations Cup Europe Division 1. Join us then live from the edge of the arena at Sopot. But for me, Phil Gazala, it's good night for the moment. Have a lovely evening where you are. A special good night and thank you from Lucinda Green who sadly wasn't able to join us in the final parts of this very I'm exciting Grand Prix. Oh, Lucinda, you're back. Are you there? I, gu I, I guess you were so excited that you ignored that you went to just watch somewhere else. No, I, I couldn't get an internet connection in the middle of my French field but I've just got it and it was great to see the results. Thank you very much. Well, Lucinda, thank you so much for joining us. And everybody, thanks for listening. Don't miss the London FEI Jumping Nations Cup on Sunday. From me, Phil Gazala, it's good night. Have a great evening wherever you are.
nič hymna. Now, big 
Lakers in the honor of the winning combination. We will hear today the national anthem of Belgium. Prosimy Państwa o powstanie teraz hymny Belgii. Teraz w imieniu organizatora zawodów gratulacje i nagrodę wręcza prezydent, prezes hipodromu Sopot, pani Kaja koczurowska wawszkiewicz w towarzystwie wiceprezydentki miasta Sopotu, pani Magdaleny Czyżyńskiej-Jakim. So once again, the winner of Longines Grand Prix of Sopot 2023, here we go for Belgium, Lecter van de Bishop with Kurt Berege. Jeszcze raz wielkie brawa! Numer jeden konkursu Kenwerge Belgia. Of course we are moving to the second best place to Wolda and it looks that this will be for a long time the only double clear. Running for Germany today at the second position with Blues de Amelin is Gerrit Nieberg. Nasi goście, Komisja Sędziowska, osoba oficjalna w tej chwili składają gratulacje kolejnym zawodnikom sklasyfikowanych w tym konkursie na miejscu drugim. Przypomnijmy, reprezentant Niemiec Gerrit Miller. At the fifth position. 
Everton also for Switzerland uh, with Chelsea Z at the fifth place it's uh, Brian Barzigan. No, it's to be on the tax representative of Schweizari. Brian Berzigan, Chelsea Z. And uh, the sixth place uh, voting for Austria it's with Kuma, Katarina Robek. Ale więc są szóstym jedyna Amazonka, najwyżej sklasyfikowana Amazonka, Katarina Romberg, Kuma, Austria. Huge congratulations to all of the place holders and of course huge thanks to our guests and to our sponsors being a part of this birthday ceremony of today's Longines Grand Prix of Sopo 2023. And of course, at the end of the prize giving ceremony, we will see all the riders back together in the lap of honor. And that, led by the winning combination, the one and only for Belgium, Lekno van der Bishop with Kuhn Verreke. Dziękuję. 